everyone, welcome to today's episode of Analyze This, where we discuss business and finance issues that affect the everyday Nigerian. My name is Arisa Ogu. This is my co-host. My name is Tunji Andrews. And on this episode, we'll be talking about massive job cuts and the economics behind it. So the National Bureau of Statistics uh, recently released an unemployment and underemployment numbers. Put together, it comes to about 32 percent, highest in who knows when. Uh, the issue is, uh, okay, for instance, I have a friend who um, is about to get married in two weeks, and um, he just recently got laid off on the bank he works with, uh, just paid for a house in Lekki, five million naira per wow. annum. So we're thinking, should we collect the, the rent <laughs> back? I mean, should we postpone the but wedding? But that really, that really sucks. Like, I've been saying this to all my friends, in 2016, no one can afford to depend on a single income anymore. There's no job security, guys. We have to figure out what our skill sets are and how we can leverage that skill set on whatever opportunities are available. The banking sector, a few weeks ago, they laid off about 5,000 people. And people have been speculating about why the banks have laid off so many people and they're supposed to have a loss of money. But I was reading something really crazy the other day. This politician allegedly said that... Um, <laughs> He said that the reason that the banks have let go of a lot of people is because they are trying to discredit this administration, really? which I think is ludicrous. Really? A bank is a business, guys. They are focused on their bottom line. So, Tsunji, let's talk about why these job cuts have happened in the banking sector in particular. Well, um, I mean, the banks don't have as much money as they used to have. Yeah. I mean, available to them to be able to trade, lend, and the rest. And that's because um, the TSA was created. That's the Treasury Single Account. And um, some money was mopped up from the banks and kept with the central bank. So the banks are thinking, the little we have, let's just sit on it right now. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So let's let's watch the waters at I this think particular time. Also, MPLs, non-performing loans, mm -hmm. have increased dramatically. A lot of people are defaulting on their loans. Interest income from loans have also decreased, which is a big part of how banks make their money. But the thing is, people are saying that it's because people aren't borrowing anymore and they're putting money more into um, government borrowing. So they're putting money more into treasury bills, bonds, that kind of thing. But is it that people aren't borrowing or the banks are not borrowing to the right sector? Because I think that historically, Nigerians like to focus on big business. In fact, let's just call it speedy speed. Banks like to, like to focus on big business as opposed to SMEs. So right now they're over leveraged when it comes to oil and gas industry, power sector, manufacturing a little bit. But if instead of focusing on the risk associated with SMEs, I feel like they should be focusing on the opportunity. So how can they um, provide financial literacy so that those SME loans won't go bad? And they, the people actually know what they're doing with the money that they've borrowed and growing those businesses. So today's um, economy, you could be growing the SME that could potentially in five to 10 years become the next Dangote or Cadbury. It's an opportunity. Uh, well, you just said five to 10 years, so which is fantastic. <laughs> but um, in the short term, um, banks are particularly businesses and they have to think about shareholders. They have to think about profits. And um, you, you can't call profits taking a lot of risks. So right now they're looking at how can we trim and, you know, because the economy is really not looking, you know, very, very good at this particular point. So they're thinking, how do we manage this right now? Let, let's, let's trim our work, our staff load, you know, and, and try and manage what the little we have in the future. Your three to five years time, when five things are booming guys, again, then we can get everybody 10. back in and, you know, employ them. But for now, uh, we're trying to no just risk, manage no the little, return. Exactly. No, 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 no. <laughs> But let's go to the streets and hear what you guys have to say. If I lost my job now, I think I'll look for one. Do I know the economy is bad at the moment? I'll still try my best to get another one. I don't think I'll travel abroad for greener pastures. I've seen it all. I've been there. For some people, it's okay. But for me, I don't think so. I don't think I can live outside Nigeria. Then um, to start the business, probably I think I'll go into farming. I'll go into farming. That's why I think it's pain right now, at the moment. Of course, I do have a plan B. Uh, I don't have the plan to work for somebody for a while. I want to be a boss on my own. I like it to be, I like to be bossy, kind of. So, I have a plan B to set up my kind of a business. I'm a fashion person, I'm into makeup, so I, I have the idea of getting the capital soon, establish something and be a boss on my own, you know, earn my income, my own income myself. 
Well, if I happen to lose my job, um, there's something I would do that to, I would resort to another thing doing now. There are a lot of opportunities in Nigeria, just that people sometimes will find it hard to utilize them. But what you have to really understand is that in a, in a period of hardship, you can get the best from people. There are a lot of online businesses are coming up today, not just because they we are there, but because people we are able to to bring out the entrepreneurial skill in them to go into something doing. So that's why you see them doing up one thing or the other. But definitely there's something you can do. I'm doing business already. I, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have this, I, I have this, a lot of business ideas. One of them is to be a consultant. And I've already prepared myself academically to be a consultant. So if I happen to lose my job today, well, I go into consulting. I go into consulting. I can also go into property sales. I can go into a lot of things. I can as well go as little as going into online businesses. You understand, I have plan B. Definitely I have. There's nobody that doesn't have plan B. What am I going there to do? To be a slave in a big man's country? I'd rather be here and utilize what I have in me. It is better here. You dig it here. So as well, if you go to court here, you know what to say. This is your country. So I rather I prefer to stay here. I don't, um, I'm not of the opinion of going abroad. Most of them are washing plays. Why can't you wash it here and make money? So I'm not, I'm not in support. If I lost my job, I fall back on my... Um on my craft, I guess my dad always says that you should have a craft because anything can happen at any time. My mom used to be a seamstress growing up and uh, my dad also had one. I can't remember what exactly it was. But always having something you can do with your hands often helps. So um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Of course I'll take the opportunity. Why wouldn't I? I mean, it's called greener pasture for a reason. So I mean, whatever is making it green, I'd like to find out what it is. So why not? Yes, I would. It's not the end of the world. You might lose your job just so you can get better opportunities out there. There are lots of things to be done. There are lots of opportunities. Nigeria is a growing economy. You could do it. There are lots of things that haven't been done, that have been done abroad, that you can bring in. Lots of ideas. We just keep pushing it. We are Nigerians. We have to survive. Yeah, I do have a plan B, C, D. Yeah. Everyone should have a plan B, C, D. Based on what we see every day in the country right now, if I were to lose my job, I would probably um, just look for something else that I am good at, something I can make money off from, something I'm, I already have an interest in. So it won't be too much of a body norm. I won't be too much of a body norm myself. No, I would never leave. I think I have a better chance at being successful quicker in my country than any other place in the world. So I would never leave for anything. If I lose my job, I don't think that would be much of a problem though. I've been trained to survive. I'm a Nigerian. I'll survive. I like what that guy said about taking on the different roles and training for consultancy, that sort of thing. This is something that people who have lost their jobs in the banking sector can take a cue from because your skills are transferable. You can now become a consultant for SMEs. You can help them package their um, loan proposals yeah. to the bank because you have inside information that they don't have access to. So I'm also thinking about the fact that, I mean, uh, people in the tech space yeah. uh, are also um, will have jobs right now. I mean, people in the IT industry mm. could... Um, it's an opportunity. It, exactly. You know, people are trying to find ways to make their businesses more efficient, you know, you know, cut down costs. So, I mean, this is something that you can also uh, sell to clients at this particular time when, I mean, they don't have the capacity to hire too many people. Exactly. You can I, create software that streamlines the processes exactly. within the business. And also, in the last couple of days, like I've been in like, say, 20 Uber taxis and um, about 70% of them were owner drivers. So, uh, you, you know that this is during the day, uh, this are articulate, well-educated people. So you know they're either on leave or they've just been fired. <laughs> so if you have if you have your vehicle and it's pretty nice looking, you could think about Uber as as An a way option. out. And yeah. um, for you that you're still in work, right? I mean, you could also do something like Uber, right? Yeah. On, on the weekends, uh, so that you have extra income. Like Arisa said, you can't just rely on Multiple one stream of income. of income. I mean, just guys. do something. Fried chicken. I mean, get to uh, help people exercise. Do something. I mean, just have something on the side that um, if your job goes, what will you do? Exactly. And even people who are on, underemployed, like it's time to just brush up your CV, figure out what else are you good at? Like you said, cooking, start Whatever. a fish farm at I the mean, back of your house. Anything, sell. anything can sell. Anything can sell if you can 
probably sell it well. Well, um, you guys, let's continue the, the conversation. Uh, the handle is at Indani TV. The hashtag is analyze this. My Twitter handle is at Tunji Andrews. My handle is at Smile Money Arisa. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. And if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss or cover at Indani TV, the hashtag is analyze this. Until next time, my name is Arisa Ugu. And I'm Tunji Andrews. And this is Analyze This. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Faust, aka Faust the Bad Guy. Well, in today's lesson, I will teach you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel. All you have to do is click on this. So simple, straightforward.